Hi guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Selling reptiles can be somewhat frustrating for many breeders. As someone who's been involved with keeping reptiles for pretty much my entire life, I've been involved with literally hundreds of transactions, either as a seller or a buyer of reptiles. I thought it would be helpful to put together a list of suggested etiquette for reptile sellers, and I believe that if you follow these tips, it's going to increase the smoothness of your sales and hopefully increase your uh, sales ability and satisfaction of your buyers. In the future, I'll put together a similar video where I'm going to outline suggested etiquette for reptile buyers. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss on, out on my future videos. As you probably know, the majority of reptile sales these days are done online, where the seller is often a complete stranger and you can't see the reptile in person until it's already there. So there's some unique challenges to this mode of selling. And so this video is going to cover specifically online sales. It doesn't really apply to reptile shows or pet stores or things like that. The first etiquette guideline is about the description of the animal that you have in your ad. You want to provide an honest, complete description of the animal and give as much information as you have to let the buyer uh, make the decision whether to buy and so the buyer has the complete history of the animal. You want to give the locality, the bloodline information if available. If the animal is a morph, you want to provide uh, information about any heads it's carrying. You also want to describe its age and you know if it's what it's feeding on and any specific tips about the care that are specific to this animal. You need to have really good photos and as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, photos are an absolute must for selling reptiles online. At a bare minimum, I would recommend that you have three photos of each animal. You want one photo taken from above showing the dorsal surface of the animal, one from the side, and then maybe one or two close-ups showing the head, the tail, or some other interesting part of the animal. Buyers always like to look at the head and the tail. So I've seen some photos from sellers that are just showing the body of the animal and it might not even be in focus. And that's not really um, acceptable. You really need a clear picture of the animal's head and tail to give the buyer information of what, about what the animal looks like. You can also have pictures of the parents if you'd like, or you can have them available on request if there's only room for, say, three or four pictures in your ad. And then another thing to consider, some sellers will put representative photos of you know, an animal from the litter or a similar looking animal. And while this is okay, most buyers will want the picture of the particular animal. So they want this specific animal. And it's always preferable if you have the time to get pictures of each individual animal to post on the ad. The second etiquette tip for boa selling is to be upfront with your terms of sale. Let the buyer know what types of payment you accept, what your guarantee is, what your shipping methods are, and any information about your payment plans. I would recommend putting together a sheet that outlines all of your terms of sale that you can give to the buyer either on demand or you can provide it in each of your ads. Another tip is how to interact with customers and potential customers via email. If they ask you a question, try to answer it as completely as possible. And if you don't know the answer to their question, it's fine to say that you don't know. Also, it helps to address people by their name, you know, to use things like dear or hi so-and-so, just, you know, to be more courteous, and also to, to write in complete sentences. In addition, if the animal is sold, it's really a good practice to get back to the potential buyer and tell them it's sold, you know, but maybe I'm expecting some more, another litter next year, or even, you know, you might want to recommend a buddy of yours who is also working with that species, who might have some babies available for sale. The next etiquette tip refers to pricing your animals and payment for your animals. 
So you should do your homework and research the boa market and know what the current market value is for your particular type of animal. And then you should state the price up front, okay, rather than saying something like best offer or something like that. Just state a price and let the buyer decide. The same thing applies for the shipping. I find it's always more useful to just state a blanket price for the shipping, you know, such as $60 for FedEx priority overnight shipping, rather than to ask the person for their zip code and to try to determine the exact amount, because it's always going to be about the same amount anyway. So some buyers will actually include the shipping and the overall price, so they don't charge extra. And I find that this is a highly uh, recommended practice because people will like simplicity and they don't like being nickel and dimed. So if you can give them just one price, that's probably the best. Or if you just want to give them, you know, the price plus a, a set price for shipping, I think that's probably okay too. But keep it simple on the part of the buyer. Make it clear to the buyer what forms of payment that you accept. So one thing that I strongly recommend against is asking a buyer to pay the PayPal fees if you accept PayPal or to pay you as a friends and family if they're not really your friends and family. So I know that PayPal has come under a lot of scrutiny and there have been a lot of negative things said about it, but they provide a service. They make it very easy for buyers and sellers to exchange money in exchange for reptiles. And they also provide some protection for buyers against fraudulent sellers. So if somebody chooses the payment by friends and family, they don't receive any of this protection and the risk is at them. So it's really not a good situation to put a potential buyer in by asking them to pose as friends and family when they're not in fact friends and family. In addition, asking them up front to cover the PayPal fees is against the terms of the PayPal agreement. You can't have the buyer pay the fees. So if you're going to do something like this, what you should do is give a discount, you know, set one price and say, you know, 3% discount if you don't use PayPal, something like that. Another very important etiquette tip is to make sure that your baby boas are feeding before you ship them out. And I've heard some stories about some unscrupulous sellers or breeders that actually shipped boas out within days of their birth. And they weren't established, they weren't feeding, just out to the uh, buyer. And in many cases, these are types of boas which are notoriously difficult to get feeding, even for experienced breeders. So it's very important that your animals are all feeding and established. I would recommend at a minimum that they fed three times, which is likely the animals are going to be about a month and a half to two months or so before they're put up for sale. The last set of etiquette tips refer to the shipping of the animal to the buyer. You want to be in really close communication and be absolutely sure that when you ship the animal out to the buyer that the buyer expects it and he or she knows the animal's coming and can unpack it and get it safely established. You also want to carefully follow the weather. You don't want to ship, of course, if it's going to be too cold or too hot. It's also critical to ship in an approved container. And there have been many videos done on shipping reptiles. I actually did one in the past. But you need to ship in a styrofoam lined container and the snake should be within a inner container, like a, a bag or a deli cup, something like that, within the styrofoam line container. There are a couple times I've had people ship me reptiles and they were not satisfactorily packed. You know, one time the person actually shipped by UPS, which is against the rules, and they didn't use a styrofoam line container. They used a empty Pampers diaper box of all things and just put the snake in there in a bag. Luckily, the snakes made it and were okay, but I was not a happy customer. In addition, I had a person shipped by FedEx, and they took two snakes that were probably about three feet long at the time, and they stuffed both of them in this little deli container, and they were just stuffed in there. It was, you know, horrendous. No snake should be stuffed in this tiny little container. And so the, one of the snakes had actually poked its head up 
and taken the lid off the deli container and it was actually loose within the styrofoam liner when it arrived. So needless to say, I was not a happy camper. Luckily the snakes were fine and you know, they established fine. The other thing you want to provide is a receipt for your customer where you give as much information as possible about the snake, you know, its bloodline, its uh, locality info, its date of birth, things like that, any applicable hats for a morph boa, etc. Just so all of that written information is in a convenient location where the customer can access it and the customer can also file it away so they have the documentation of the bloodline and locality info of their animal. And then one final tip for selling your boas is you want to follow up after the shipment has gone out just to make sure that the customer received the snake and that everything was acceptable and see if the customer has any questions just to make sure that the animal is established well and gets acclimated to its new home. So I believe that if you follow these etiquette tips, it should make your boa selling transactions go a whole lot easier. As I mentioned, stay tuned. In the near future, I'll be doing a similar video on boa buying etiquette tips. So I thought I'd end by getting out this Argentine boa. You know, a lot of you have been asking lately about my Argentine boas, and as you probably know, they are probably my top favorite locality boa. This is a five-year-old female that was born here, and just really chill. You can see how chill she is. If this was a true red tail, she'd probably be squeezing my hand, you know, cutting off the circulation and, you know, probably thrashing around trying to get away. But there's something about the Argentines. They just have this great calm presence. They're just, a, you know, a great pet boa and, you know, also very beautiful looking animals. This particular animal, you can see she's kind of more of a dark brownish color, kind of like a mocha color. And her markings are kind of more of a caramel creamy, you know, yellowish white. I have other Argentines that are kind of more black and white. And I think that they're all, you know, really beautiful looking animals. This one, I'm not going to breed them next year, unfortunately. I don't have a male that's old enough. This female is probably not quite ready anyway. I think she'll probably be ready a year from now, you know, for the 2022 20, breeding season. Um, but just, you know, beautiful animal. I think she's probably about six feet now. Um, these guys, unfortunately, they're getting kind of hard to find lately, the Argentine boas, and the price has skyrocketed. So I'm hoping that in the next few years I'll be able to have some litters of these because I know how much that you guys want these boas and, you know, I know how much I love them. So hopefully we can uh, breed some nice Argentines for you, how you guys to add to your collections. So I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.